Welcome back to the channel, guys. So first off, I wanna thank everybody for the views, the likes, the comments, the sharing on social media. Um, I mean, I'm seeing my videos get blasted out quite a bit. Like, I mean, you guys seem to really, really like the content. So as long as you guys keep doing that and I keep seeing it getting shared and keep seeing people getting hyped up, I'm gonna keep making these videos. So today is actually a subscriber-based uh, comment that we're turning into a video. Um, he had said that he's got a Gen 4 ECU style vehicle and wants uh, some information on how to scale an ID1050X or ID1300 injector in. So today's content is gonna cover um, pretty much any injector that's large enough to where um, it would need scaling. Some of these, depending on the operating system, you've got some operating systems that are limited at 63 pound per hour. So the majority of the injectors need to be scaled on those. Um, but on the later ECUs where they have the 127 pound per hour limit, um, you don't have to scale them as often. Um, but I wanna show you guys the process on how to do that anyways. If you have a 63 pound per hour limitation vehicle and you wanna know how to scale those injectors, drop a comment down below. Let me know if I get enough interest in there. You know, if I get four, five, six comments about you know wanting that video, I'll put that video out. Um, so anyway, so today again, we're gonna talk about Gen 4 ECU. So let's go ahead and hop into this file. All right, so the tune file I decided I wanted to use today is gonna to be for a 2013 Corvette Grand Sport. Um, we're just gonna use it as a stock file folder for an LS3 car. Um, but this process is gonna be the same on like a 2010 and newer CTSV with, with the E67 ECU. It's gonna be the same as like a 2010 to 15, 15 Camaro um, and pretty much all the Corvettes from like 07 to 13. Um, so this is gonna pretty much cover the majority of the vehicles. Again, if you have a 63 pound per hour limited ve uh, vehicle, the process is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be the same, but different. I would have to make that video for it to make sense. Anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our stock injector data. Um, so you're going to open up our tune file um, and you're going to go to engine and you're going to go to fuel and general. And then, so this column right here, uh, where you see flow rate versus pressure, um, offset versus pressure, that is your factory injector data. So for you guys that are wanting an injector upgrade, um, I'm going to make a couple suggestions. Just let's just want to get this out here. So obviously currently what's in this uh, ECU tune file is going to be a LS3 style injector data. If you need a little bit larger injector than that, LS9s are a good injector. Um, you can get the, those from Rock Auto. That actually seems to be the cheapest place. You know, straight from GM, like 260 bucks for the set. Um, after that injector size, if you need bigger than that, I would go up to like a Bosch 80 pound injector. Um, which is kind of like a Siemens Deca style injector. Um, so that one would be good. You can usually pick those up from like A&A Corvette, uh, BS Racing, BTR, places like that. If you need larger than that, then I would start to recommend either Injector Dynamics or Fuel Injector Clinic. Um, both those manufacturers have large injectors, range, pretty much ranging anywhere from stock size up to 2,650 cc, which is, I mean, an insane size injector for, especially it, pretty much if you're at that point, you should be the point of getting rid of your stock ECU. You should really be going over to Holly or Haltech or something like that. Um, but anyway, so if you guys want to do a smaller injector upgrade, like an 80 pound injector, I'll go and show you where you get the data from. Um, so you want to go on to Google and you can just type in like ANA uh, supercharger. And the first thing that'll pop up is the ANA Corvette website. This is a good place to get some injector data for a lot of the LS1, 2, and 3s. So you go up to the top, click tech, you go to injector data, and uh, HP tuners format. They also have an EFI Live format if you guys need that. Um, but you'll scroll down and you'll see we got LS1, 2, and 3. You've got Siemens Deca and two styles of Bosch's. So you can pretty much click on any of these and these are all Excel files. So you'll be able to actually, you know, input, you'll take this Excel file, it tells you the data, you'll be able to take that data and put it in your ECU. So I'll just go ahead and pull up one to show you what, what they offer in their injector data. Um, so let's just click the 80 pound because like I said, that's a, that's a pretty common size. Um, so I'm going to come up here and we're going to open up our Excel file. And so when it, when it first opens up, it's going to be on offset, but let's just go from top to bottom. Um, so in this tune file, you'll see where it's flow rate versus pressure. Um, that would be this IFR value. Um, if you do need to scale um, this actual here, let me zoom in just a little bit. Um, if you do need to scale, you can actually click this as an actually an input. 
So if you want to scale it at 50, which is what I always suggested at 50 or 25. So if you need to scale for 50, it's going to take the data and this is the corrected data now for um, a 50% scaled vehicle. Um, they, they also have injector pulse, they have offset, they have everything you need on ANA's website for this style of injector. Let's move ahead on and go over to Injector Dynamics though. So Injector Dynamics, like that's that's what I want to do this video on today. It's going to be doing some ID1300s and a LS3 E38 ECU. And again, it's going to be the same for the E67. Um, so pull up Injector Data, Injector Dynamics data. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and open up a new tab and search Injector Dynamics. And we're going to click this ID1300 XDS. So to get their plug and play data, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see where it literally says plug and play data. And you're going to see right here, it says data is located here. Um, so click that. So now you're going to see uh, GM injector characterization. That's what we need. They also offer um, injector data for other vehicles. Obviously today we're talking about GM. So we're going to click that and we're going to scroll down to the ID1300 and on the left side, this is HP tuners format, right side, this is the FLI format. So we're going to click the left ID1300. And so now that has downloaded. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up that Excel file and have it ready. So we're going to go back to our tune file folder. And so the first thing you're going to want to do is we need to do injector flow rate, but we have to scale it. Uh, the reason why we have to scale it is, is if, again, if you look down here at the bottom, let me see if I can get to where it shows it. You'll see right here, it says 127 pounds per hour. That's how you determine um, the limitation of your ECU. So if we go under injector flow rate, under injector dynamics, you will see that when we get down, we've got to scroll it up to match our axis. So that's one thing you want to do is identify your axis. So in the Corvette, um, the axis, basically the way I identify it is everything's ending in the number eight up top. Um, so on their data, you're going to scroll down and you'll see where now this one has everything ending in eight. Um, so as we look through in pound per hour, um, you'll see where, I mean, by over three bar of, of pressure, we're over 127 pound per hour. So in order to fix this, we need to scale the injector data. So what you want to do is you want to come over here to scale percentage. You just want to type in 50. We always want to half it. We always want numbers that makes it easy to work out the, the math on. Um, so we're going to have 50. And then, so you'll notice now, which is pound per hour scaled. You'll see that we can actually highlight this and copy it. And you'll see where it's also obviously less than 127 pound per hour. So hit control C, copy it and we're gonna paste it straight into our tune file. So, the, so before we do anything else, let's go ahead on and correct our stoic value. So because we halved our injector data, uh, we need to basically use half of the fuel to keep the airflow and torque model correct. And the reason why that important, is important is, again, on later model transmissions, the transmission shift torque based. So the transmission to me, automatic vehicle is the most critical for good injector data. Now, really, realistically, every tune, you need to have the best injector data you can to have the best tune that you can. But for transmission tuning, injector data is critical. As long as we keep our torque model correct, then we don't have to do any other weird, funky corrections inside the trans tuning. Um, we can tune it just like what we did in my, in my 608, 609 video. Um, so in, in order to um, correct the stork value, all we've got to do is we got to double it. So we'll just come over here to Stoic AFR and click the top left and we're going to multiply times two and that's going to double our Stoic, which means it's going to have our injector data essentially correct for ID 1300s. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to go under this AFR term under IVT terms, which IVT is intake valve temp, and you're going to click this and we're going to half this as well. So you just type in 0.5. And we're going to multiply, so it's 3.96 now. So also, if you want to correct your instrument cluster display for your mile per gallon, you're going to come under here to field density, and you're going to half this as well. So that takes care of injector flow rate and like you know half injector flow rate and doubling stoic. That controls all the torque modeling, airflow modeling is going to be correct. So now we just need to input in the rest of our data. So the first thing we're going to see is you're going to see minimum injector pulse. So we should go on our Excel file and find injector pulse. Um, so you're going to see it's under going to be under short, short pulse adder and minimum pulse width is 0.35. So we just go back to our tune file and type in 0.35. Now it's not going to do exactly 0.35 on here. It's just the way HP tuners lays it out in the ECU. So even though it did 0.352, 
that is absolutely fine it's as close as we can get to it um, so the next one we're going to do is it's going to be well it shows um, default pulse width we don't have that in gen 4 so we don't have to worry about that one short pulse limit is next so we do actually have that one so we're going to scroll down and factory is four we're going to change this to a three And so then we go back to this and next thing we're going to do is our short, short pulse adder. Now you'll see two of these tables, the, this one where it goes zero to uh, 0.125, that is gen four, where this one goes zero to 0 0.068 or 608 is gen three. Um, so we're going to copy this. We're going to copy it all the way over to four and we're going to input this into short pulse adder right here and control V. So that one is done. So next we need to do our offset. Um, so you're gonna go under offset. And again, we're gonna have to identify the table that has the correct axis. So on your tune, you're gonna be looking at offset versus pressure versus ignition volts. Um, so you'll see that once again, the axis shows everything ending in eight up here. Um, so we're gonna go and scroll down till we find the one that has all the eights, which is right here. And we're gonna drag it and copy this. And we're going to input this into our tune file. And that's it, guys. This right here, um, you could take a bone stock vehicle, uh, just like what we did. You could bolt in ID 1300s, make the changes we just did, and the car will run and drive just fine. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save this, and we'll just call this, um, we'll just have it ending in, uh, we'll just say stock mod ID 1300. And then we would load it into the car. So there's some guys that, like I said, what they'll do is, is they'll come in here and they'll just, you know, they would input it in the data in a hundred percent, hundred percent scaled version. And basically from like 328 up would have just been 127. That's, that's just, it's what it would have been. And so then they would have started to tune the V table and math curve to the improper data. That's what throws off their torque modeling. That's what causes their transit shift funky. So a lot of times what they would tell you is, is well, we need to go under torque model and go under this EQ ratio base and multiply this times 0.13 or 0.14. You don't have to do that. Doing it this way keeps torque modeling correct. The GMEC you can actually only pick up up to 640 foot pounds of torque anyways in this era. Um, so as long as you have the torque model correct, if you need to make any other transmission adjustments, you will do it just like what we did in my 6L80 video or 6L90 video or 8L90s, whatever you're working on. You don't have to rape your torque model to get the transmission to shift correctly. Um, so anyways, guys, that's my video on scaling an ID 1300. Again, the process is the same for an ID 1050, uh, FIC 1650, any of those, it's all the same. Now, again, you, if you get to a point where uh, half the injector flow rate still isn't enough, if I get enough uh, comments about that, I will make that video as well. It's a little bit more tricky, but I'll make it. Um, so anyways, hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to have a, I think it's an 09 Vortec Max truck on the dyno with a VTR torque cam in it. Um, so if you aren't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe and I'll walk you guys to tune that thing on the dyno. We'll go start to finish on that one. That one with it being less radical, I will actually show you more in detail on how to tune that one. Just because I feel like it's easier for everybody to get a grasp on if I use more of a basic video or a basic vehicle to start off with. So anyways, guys, see y'all tomorrow.